Breast implant surgery has been around since the 1960s, invented by two surgeons in Houston. They've gone through multiple generations of different silicone gel. Silicone was initially used because it's viscous and feels natural and is considered biologically inert. There are at this time now three main implants to choose from. There are the old single lumen saline implants, which have mostly fallen by the wayside. They're just not that good, frankly. They can show rippling along the edges. They slosh. They feel more like water balloons and real breast tissue. Uh, so the real implants that we prefer to use now uh, is the silicone gel implant. Its latest generation now has been around for about eight years. The advantage the ideal implant has in this case is a woman can look in the mirror at any time and confirm that her implants are intact. If there were to be a leak in an ideal implant, over the next 48 hours you would see a gradual reduction in size and softness of the implant, and now we know what, what's, that we have a leak there. Um, so what do you do then? I mean, we're not happy if somebody has a leak, but both the silicone gel and the ideal implant so carry a warranty that far surpasses most anything we have in our society. For life, if you have a leak in an ideal implant or the silicone, the manufacturers will replace not only that, but the opposite side for life. That's unheard of. In addition, in the first 10 years, uh, if there is a leak, they will provide funding to help defray the cost of replacing that implant. So that's a terrific deal. The only downside to the uh, ideal implant is it is a bit more expensive because it's more expensive to manufacture. But the benefit of knowing the integrity of the implant just by looking in a mirror as opposed to an expensive MRI, and it does carry a lower contracture rate, meaning hardening around it, and it does have a lower uh, deflation rate than the silicone, uh, make it now the latest greatest.